3, verse 19 through 30 reads this. Nebuchadnezzar was foul, was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them in the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell in the roaring flames. But suddenly, suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, mm -hmm. we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted. I see four men unbound, Hallelujah. walking around in the fire. That's a testimony for somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, Pastor. Oh, Lord. They were walking around in the fire unharmed. And the fourth looks like a guy. We're going to fix that in a minute. It looks like a guy. Right. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. So shouted Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, step out of the fire. Mm -hmm. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Mm -hmm. Not a hair on their head were singed, mm -hmm. and their clothing was not scorched. Mm -hmm. They didn't even smell of smoke. My God. Yes. Amen. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angels to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There's no other God who can rescue like this. Right? Amen. My Amen. goodness. Amen. Then the king promoted, the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to an even higher position in the province of Babylon. If I could just give you a thought today. You know I got to do a Bishop Lord Jones on you. Come on, sir. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. Uh -huh. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Yes, yes, yes. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I was trying to work with my phone and I was going, I didn't want to ask the praise lady. I was trying to do it myself and I just said, I had time. I was trying to get the hook to the Beyond the Destiny Child song. I'm a survivor. I was I was listening to it yesterday. I was like, they were talking about something. Yes. Okay. They said, I'm a survivor. I'm not gonna give up. Right. They got it together. Okay. Just we don't. But in this story, Nebuchadnezzar takes over as king. And Babylon, if you ever read about Babylon, if you ever studied it, Babylon was an awesome kingdom. 
it would if you just talk throughout the history, it was just awesome. It's talking about one of the seven wonders of the world. They talking about the hanging garden that was in Babylon and all these different things. And Nebuchadnezzar took over, took over, and he had a little understanding about God. But who knows that when you get a little power, your whole attitude changes. Right. Once you arrive. At your destiny, you think you got it all figured out. Okay. Once you get your good job, your house, and that promotion you've been waiting for, we think we got it all made. Mm -hmm. And Nebuchadnezzar goes and shares and, and tells his officials, go to the land of the Jews and give me some young, strong men that we can train up in our way to be officials and to tend to the land and take care of some things. But he gave a specific order. For them to be smart, to be wise, to be strong and, and studious. Yes. And so he called these men and they came about, Daniel and the other three. And they brought them in and the king said, we're going to give them rations and make sure that they stay strong and prepare. And they're going to do this for three years before they can even come into the royal courts. Mm -hmm. So he would feed them rations and wine and they were bringing Daniel some, and Daniel said, no, we'll have vegetables and water. And the chief was so nervous, he said, oh, no, I can't do that. If the king said, you get thin and hungry looking, he'll take my head. And Daniel said, just watch over us for ten days. Hallelujah. And just give us this water and vegetables. And if we're not stronger than the other people that eat the other rations, yes. then we'll go to that. Yes. And this chief watched them for 10 days, and they came out more stronger and more wiser than the others. Yes. And King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and leaders are so funny. They Instead of getting to the point, they want to make stuff so mysterious. And okay. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and he wanted to interpret it, but he also wanted them to tell him what he dreamt. Wow. So he calls for his uh, sorcerers and and wizards and so forth and say, I need you to tell me my dream and also interpret it for me. And the wizards and the sorcerers said, oh, sir, who do you think we are? That's impossible to do. And in so many words, Nebuchadnezzar goes and said, I need you to figure it out or somebody's going to die. <laughs> and so they said, that's impossible, king. We can't get to this point. We can't do that in. And so he started killing everybody, and it came to take out Daniel and all the other men. And they said, hold up. Go over and tell the king to give us some time to find out what his dream was. And the Bible says that Daniel and the other three went down in their room, and they said, let us pray to God, and he will give us the answer. He will reveal this dream unto us. And you know when you praying and it's effective and you have a continual relationship with God. He hears you real fast. Yes, yes. Right. And he prayed and showed him the dream. And they went to the king and said, we have your dream. And he said, tell me, tell me the dream about the golden statue, about the golden head being Babylon, about the arms and the silver part being the Roman Empire, and then the feet being the Persians. The feet being made of silver and clay, talking about division, all those different things. We'll get into that in Bible study. So if you study it, you'll learn these different things. It's, it's a point behind it. And he told the king, God has given you a dream about the future. About things that are not going to be victorious. Things are going to fall apart. Issues are going to happen. And so they told him the dream, and they promoted Daniel and the men. They went to the province. Daniel stayed in the house, and the others took care of all the land. Somewhere along the line, Nebuchadnezzar thought he had it all figured out and decided to make the statue. And then give a decree. We have made this statue all the land where we play and sound the trumpet and the harps and the cymbals. When you hear the sound, stop and bow down to this image. And if you don't bow down to the image, you will die and your family will die. So he sounded the trumpet and everybody would stop what they're doing and bow down throughout the land. But how do you know that when you know God, you're not going to back down from your beliefs? So Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they 
didn't bow down. And the three Hebrew boys, Daniel wasn't even in the picture at that time. And they didn't bow down. And you know there's haters all around. All right, now. There's people that are out to get you from the beginning anyway. Uh -huh. They didn't like you from Jump Street. Uh -huh. So they ran to the king and said, King, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they not following the rules. They not playing right. You know what you have to do. You made the decree that if we don't shout and bow down before the statue, we have to die and be turned into the furnace. The king was skeptical. He was like, oh, man, really? Then he went and said, bring them here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did you not bow down to the image that was created? Did you not bow down to the God? The Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, there's only one God all right, now, we all right. bow down to. Uh -huh. all right. all right. Hallelujah. And he's not an image. All right. Oh, when you start talking truth, folks don't like the truth. Right. The Bible says that King Nebuchadnezzar was so infuriated. He was so angry that we get to this point now. That now he said, turn up the fire seven times the normal time that we do it. The fire was so hot that they barely could stand next to it. And I want to focus on verses 20, 21, 24, and 27. I'm a survivor. Verse 20 and 21 says, Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind the men and throw them into the blazing fire. So they tied them up and threw them in the furnace, fully dressed in pants, turbans, robes, and garments. Do you know that when you're in a fight against the enemy, when you're in a spiritual warfare battle, there has to be a different kind of fight that the enemy tries to bring you. <laughs> Regular people, they'll just throw them in the fire. But at some point in our life, in this warfare, the Bible even says, the devil know who Jesus is in trouble. Right. 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 So he had to tell them, get some strong men and bind them up and throw them in the fire. Why did he need the strong men? Why did he have to bind up mere men to throw them in the fire? But see, it was all ordained by God. Yes, sir. Yes, yes amen. Jesus. Yes, sir. When God wants to get the glory... He's going to do extra. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah, ah, yeah. Yeah. Good, sir. You know, when you get a promo when you want a promotion on the job, you always do extra. Yes, yes. The boss likes it typed up on good paper and everything. So everybody trying to type up their paper and, and do good. And you go out to Office Depot and go buy that $30 pack paper and make it real good. You just go that extra mile to uh -huh. do the job. Uh -huh. The boss like his car clean. You go out and wash his car. You put that good wax on it. You grab a toothbrush, get inside the realms, and you go the extra mile. Uh -huh. God says, I can't get the glory by just throwing them in the fire. Amen. He says, so I'm going to make sure he understands. Get some men to hold them down and to fire them so they won't try to run. They're not going to run. Right. And then tie them up. And then make sure they have on all their garments. Yeah. Don't just throw them in the fire and just where they can singe their skin, but let it marinate for a little bit. Let the, the heat hit the clothes and they can actually feel it, but it's not touching their skin yet. God said, I got to get the glory in this situation. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, God. Do you know that when you're in your job or you're in a relationship, things are out of the ordinary when it's pertaining to you? Mm -hmm. They're like, why is it going like this? Why is this happening? Because God wants to get the glory Amen. in your life. Yes. Amen. You done had a plan with the manager at your place and y'all had it all mapped up. You know I got to pay the rent um, on the 10th. This is the only time I have money. And God said, no, I'm trying to bring you out into a financial embedderment. Mm -hmm. Was that a word? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and so you at your place and all of a sudden they give you 
your eviction notice. You said, hold up, we had a thing. We had a signed agreement that I can pay this money like this. Oh, but I had to break it. My boss is getting down on me. But not knowing that God is about to get the glory in your life. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You have 24 hours to come up with the money. I don't have 20. I can't get $3,500 in 24 minutes. What are you talking about? I can't do that. But God said, oh, they just don't know. You go to sleep. You're worried. You're tossing and turning at night. You wake up the next morning. Somebody's calling you and saying, hey, God laid you on my heart. You need some help with your rent or there's something happening out on in your life. You just need to, oh, yeah, I'm behind. I need $3,500. But God knows who to send. Yeah. Yeah. He won't send the word that's like, oh, $3,500? I didn't know you need that much. He's going to send a person that can help you in this situation. Okay. So you get these checks and it's signed and you take it to the manager. Oh, where did you come up with the money? Oh, somebody blessed me. You can't even get God the glory. <laughs> These situations, God wants it to happen. Even when we come to the house of God, not knowing who Jesus is, He wants the glory. We come with needles still hanging in our arms. We come with our short dresses. We come dug down, gang banging. We just come drunk, dismayed, tattered, torn, abused, mistreated, everything jacked up. God wants us. To come to the house like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I can't do it. Right? The prayer warriors can't do it. It's all through the glory of God. Yes. 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 The needle fell out the arm and the marks you, disappeared. Yes. Right. Thank you, Jesus. The sickness and the infirmities went away. And you didn't have to go into rehab. You were totally cleansed. You're not yes. tasting it no more. You don't have to get rehabilitated. But you're all cleansed. You don't taste the alcohol. You don't need the crack cocaine no more. Not looking for a man or a woman no more. God did that. Yes, yes He did. Yeah. There's no process in deliverance when it comes to God. Amen. Every time you read about something God did, it was in an instance. It was suddenly. It was at that moment. It was in due season. It was at the appointed time. Amen. 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 So they threw them in the flame, tied up, fully dressed, pants, turbans and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they drew the men in the fire. Right. It was that hot. Mm -hmm. So now, the three boys are in the fire. Normal, in our eyes, would have been, as soon as they hit the fire, they would have been screaming. <laughs> they'd have been shouting or they'd have been kicking but when you trust God Thank you, I'm going to get to that part mm -hmm. when you're determined yes. when you know God can deliver me out of this situation when you're not kicking and screaming and murmuring and complaining you know how y'all do when y'all go through they just took it like men mm -hmm. and so they sat back they threw them in a fire and the king looks and says, hey, didn't we throw three men in a fire? Yes, sir, we did. Look, there are four men now in the fire. And the king, listen to what the king says. Everybody knows who God is. Everybody knows how awesome God is. We just don't want to believe at some point in time. Okay. He tells the boys to come out of the fire. Mm -hmm. I'm moving fast for time's sake. They come out the fire and I love church folk. <laughs> Let's talk about the church people. <laughs> people are getting delivered and coming back to church and they all beat up and tattered and torn, but once they come out the fire, we don't understand to give God the glory. All we do is begin to look. How did that happen? Mm. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> what, what? He was in the fire. What? <laughs> the clothes still intact. His shirts are. His chucks are still black and white. They look so good. Look at his hair. It's not, he don't smell like smoke. He don't look like smoke. He just. He just looks okay.
okay. Yes. How did this happen? The officials didn't see a hair on their head mm -hmm. said this. Mm -hmm. But what happened Lord. is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, <laughs> Before I serve your God, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'll die right. for my God. My God. Right. But then they also said, but well, he said, but we know that our God will save us. Yes, yes. If he save us in the fire, Lord. he saved us. But if we die in the fire, he still saved us. Though he's saving, yet will I praise him. It doesn't matter what we go through, God is still in control. Still in control. Listen to this. Listen. Listen. Let me get to my scriptures. Let me get back to I'm a survivor. Romans 5, 3 and 5. I'm going to read in the Amplified Version. Just go ahead and write this down. Talking about I'm a survivor. You got to understand that in the midst of your going through, you're still surviving. Thank you, Lord. Right, right. In the midst of your storm, it's still sunny. Mm. Yeah, some of y'all got to see loud that. <laughs> <laughs> in the midst of all your rubble, it's still being built. Okay. That's how God works. In your darkness, there is light. In your sickness, there is health. In your poverty, there is richness. That's how he operates. Yes. And your craziness, there's sanity. Amen. That's how he operates. Yes. Romans 5, 3 through 5 reads this in the Amplified Version. Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Mm -hmm. Let us exult in triumph in our troubles. Mm -hmm. How many times do we hear this? Yes, sir. <laughs> let us exult in triumph in our troubles. And rejoice in our sufferings. Tell somebody it's good to go through. It's good to go through. Knowing that pressure and infliction and hardship produce patience yes. and unswerving endurance. Hallelujah. Your test that you're going through is producing endurance. Mm -hmm. It's producing fortitude. Mm -hmm. It's producing strength. It's making you a soldier in Christ. Yes. Why do you think in the military they do all those push-ups? They do the pull-ups. They do the squats. Because it's making you ready. It's conditioning your body for the storm. That when you're taking captive, when you're out in the jungle, and you're taking, you, you understand, you remember, when the company commander said, just give them your social security number. Uh -huh. Just say, this is Private Bowman, E-4, United States Navy, from Alabama, Missouri, and Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> you were conditioned yes. for this purpose. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. God said, you understand how to go through because you've been tested. Yes. Uh -huh. You've been tried. Uh -huh. You've been put through. Yes. You've been beat down. You've been pressed. You've been led astray. You've been hoodwinked. You've been bamboozled. Oh, yeah. But it produced glory. Yes. Hallelujah. It manifested God in you. Yes. I know you don't understand, but your struggle produces glory. Yes. 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 Amen. All right. I got some amens. Remember that tomorrow. Right. <laughs> when you wake up going through.
to the hills from which cometh our help. Yeah. We declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Yeah. We knew that we had all power in our hands. Yeah. We knew we had the victory. We knew we weren't defeated. We knew we weren't cast out. We knew that he was in the fire with us. Thank you, Jesus. Any ca and character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Such hope never disappoints or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. To be a survivor, you got to go through. Yes. Men, women that have been raped, now they're doing these walkathons and fundraisers because they're survivors. Yes. The the pink, the colored pink now for the cancer mm -hmm. because they're survivors and they want to tell the next lady, you can make it yes, sir. because I did. Yes, sir. I lost parts of my body, but I'm still standing. Yes, sir. I lost my hair, but I'm still standing. Amen. Yes, sir. Because they had fortitude. Mm -hmm. They didn't lay on their bed and die. Amen. They didn't lay on their sick bed and complain. They went through it because there was somebody else. Kids that were abused in their homes and in the foster system or ran away and were molested and treated wrong, they came out to tell the story yes. that other kids won't have to go through it. Yes. Uh -huh. They're survivors. Yes. Uh -huh. Isaiah chapter 40. This is good stuff. This yes, is good. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. 31. Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Yes, sir. They will soar high on wings like eagles. Yes. They will run and not grow weary. Yes. They will walk and not faint. You can't go out into the world and fight the enemy on your own and think you're going to make it. You will not survive. The Bible tells us that the young men, they're going to become weary. They're going to be weak. They're going to be tattered and torn. But only those who trust, who abide, who adhere to, who follow the instruction, who obeys the word, only those can have wings of eagles who can fly above the storm, who can run the race and not become weary. Yes, sir. And thank not. That's the only way you can survive is to trust God. Will you trust Him in your situation? That's the only way you can stand. You can't murmur or complain and say, I'm trusting God. Amen. You can't have a pity party and say, I'm trusting in God. Amen. You slapping Him in the face. Amen. God is real. Where am I going to get that money? <laughs>
that somebody catching up with you. It doesn't matter who catching up with you. The Bible said press toward the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. It said set your face like a flint. Don't be looking around and see who with you. You got to, as soon as you look around, pop. Because you're trying to figure out the next man. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets the same blessings. Mm -hmm. We all have a measure of faith. Yes. Yes. We don't go through the same stuff. You say, but Pastor, we all have financial issues, but not the same. Not right. the same. That's true. Amen. I might not have what I want, but I'm cool with it. Mm -hmm. God didn't care of me. Yes. Amen. You got two hundred dollars in the bank, and you say this ain't good enough. This ain't gonna work. God is not doing it. I'm not gonna pay my time, man. <laughs> you will grow weary and faint. Listen, 2 Corinthians 4, write all this stuff down so you can go home and get it in your spirit. Second, somebody said, get to the good stuff, Pastor. Alright. 2 Corinthians 4, 11 through 18. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus. Does everybody believe that? Yes. 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 All right. Mm -hmm. So that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. Mm -hmm. So we live in the face of death, mm -hmm. but this has resulted in eternal life for you. Yes. yes. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God, so I spoke. We know, we know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. And God's grace reaches more and more people. There will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. Yes, yes. That is why we never give up. Yes. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. Hallelujah, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For our present troubles are small yes. and won't last very long. Yes, yes. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix and gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Yes. yes. This, 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 deal, this work with me for a minute. The issue that you're going through right now is producing glory. Okay. Yes, yes. The very thing that you're going through right now is producing glory. How? There's nothing good in the situation I am. That's your flesh talking. Mm -hmm. That's your psyche. That's your mind. Of course there's no glory produced in that. But when you have the mind of Christ, yes, yes. when your mind is transformed, when you're thinking His thoughts, when you're thinking His ways, when you're operating in His power, then you can look at your circumstance and say, God, you got to do this. <laughs> Let me step out of the way that you may handle this. Okay. That I, I, matter of fact, I don't even see this no more coming out. I look at it, I get irritated. So I'm going to give it to you that I may rest. Yes. Wow. Yes. And then what happens Amen. is, Amen. there's a cloud of smoke that comes in your situation. Hallelujah. And you're more. God just said, thank you. Hallelujah. I've been waiting for that. Now he can step into your yeah. problem yeah. and fix it. That's what he said now. He said in the beginning, the earth was without void and he stepped in it and said, I create this. That's right, that's right. He spoke nothing into something. Yes, yes. Your situation is nothing. God said, I got to do it because you don't even believe what you're saying. Wow. God, no. We got the hook of Messiah. We quote the scriptures, but we don't believe it. Right. You go to the gas station, you don't even believe you can get more. Huh. Give me 20 on 4, and you stop at 19.99. <laughs> Y'all know you do that? You be at the gas station, you give them $20, and you still watching the thing. <laughs> it doesn't go past 20. It's not. But you don't believe it. When you go home, you got food in. When you go home, oh, what are we going to eat today? You know what's in your refrigerator. You know you got the loni and two pieces of cheese and, and a 
jar of mayonnaise when you added water to it? <laughs> but that's your situation. When the last time somebody, somebody went home and anointed their refrigerator? Okay. When the last time the men poured out their wallets and anointed their wallets? Okay. When the last time the women anointed their purses? When the last time you prayed over your children? When the last time when you know your crazy husband and wife was acting crazy and while they were asleep you just smacked them with oil? <laughs> when, the last time, when the last time you didn't have gas money and you put it and put your hand on the needle and said to be full in the name of Jesus? Yes. But see, it's not producing glory because all you see is empty. All you see is hungry. All you see is broke. All you see is a bad relationship. But God said, if you would just give it to me, I will produce glory. I will provide a way out. I will help you survive this thing. Then he tells the disciples, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. Jesus, teacher, Messiah, how do we get out of this? We tried to do just like you did. We walked up to him and said, have mercy. We laid hands. We said, go and sin no more. And it didn't work. He even told the ones that walk with him, you have no relationship. Yeah. You're with me every day. We got to pour the battery up that thing? Yes, sir. <laughs> you walk with me every day. Yes. And you still don't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. You carry your Bible, you still don't have a relationship. Yes. Jesus. You come to church faithfully, you still have no relationship. Come on, Pastor. You leave prayer, but it's not effective. Jesus. Your life is not Christian. Right. This is why we don't give up. Right? Don't give up. It says mortify the deeds of the flesh. Okay. That the spirit yeah. may come alive. That's yeah. the only time you yeah. can commit murder. Yes. It don't take to be super deep. We done heard it and you mortify the deeds of the flesh. You gotta go out down into the pneuma of God. And you gotta go down into the 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 theologicalness of God. No. <laughs> no. No, you don't. Just go home, mm -hmm. get on your face, Okay. pray the way you pray to God. Amen. When you go home, you pray this, that most marvelous father of all generations. You're not going to survive that. No. That's not where you are right now. No, sir. Right now you broke, the car note is due, yes. the rent is due, everybody's knocking on your door. Right now all you want to do is say, Jesus, yes, sir. Come on. thou son of David. Yes,
I'm a survivor. Yes, sir. Promised. 
Let me back up. Some of y'all missed it. When you continue to do God's will, then you will receive all that He has promised. So I'm going to close my eyes and just look at yourself and say, Am I doing His will? Yeah. Then get no hand claps. <laughs> For in just a little while, the coming one will come and will not delay. Let me do it for the um, the church folks. He that will come <laughs> shall come and will come. You know you got to get the King James with some people. I don't know what you're talking about. It's all I know. And my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. Yes, sir. Amen. But we are not like those who turn away from God mm -hmm. to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Let me just read this last scripture and go on in. Galatians 6 and 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings. Oh my God. Oh my God. If we do not quit, if we do not give up, if we do not back down, if we don't go somewhere in a corner and hide, the same way you started the race, you got to finish. Yes, sir. The same way you came up the water a tongue talker, you got to continue to be a tongue talker. The same way you came out separated and set apart, you got to stay separated and set apart. Yes, sir. The same way you shun evil, you still got to shun evil. The same way you stop cussing for a week, you got to keep on stop cussing for a week. The same way you stop backbiting, you still can't backbite. The same way you would give your offering, you still got to give your offering. The same way you carried your Bible wherever you were, you still carry your Bible. The same way you prayed every hour on the hour, you still pray on the hour. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop. The same way when it took to get you here, you gotta do it so you can stay here. Amen. I'm a survivor. Amen. There's people out there waiting for you to tell them that I was a crackhead. Okay. How did you stop tasting it? How did you stop selling your TV? How did you stop selling your kids? How did you stop putting your daughters on the street? Tell me how I did it. It was all in the name of Jesus. It might have killed me, but I knew that he wouldn't let me die. Right. How did you get out of being broke? My this God. is where everybody is. Mm. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord Jesus. We was hungry. I was telling somebody the other day. I wanted to know, for real. Our life was off every other month. Mm -hmm. Consistently. Mm -hmm. Our rent was behind six months, and the lady was always so nice. I know y'all going to get it to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then, we were thrown in the furnace. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The owners got tired of dealing with it. And they got them a management company. And they said, y'all need to pay this money, y'all get out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I don't know, it would be a problem with me. We said, oh Lord, we might as well start packing. <laughs> to this day, I don't know where this money came from. I don't even care. But now that I think about it, I know God did it. Amen. We're survivors. Yes. A lot of you Probably. give us compliments. Oh, y'all so good. Y'all so cute couple. Y'all be matching. Pastor, you just so good with your work. Lady Bowman, you know how to talk to the ladies. You're so nice to the people. Y'all always so hospitable. You should have seen us in 2000. <laughs> if you were talking to me, you might have got cussed out. <laughs> you might have been lied on. You might have got some big sarcasm. 
But we're survivors. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Pastor, you're so good to Lady Bowman. You speak words and you follow Ephesians 5. You pour words of life into her. And you should have seen us in 2004. Well, she was nothing. It wasn't important to me. Family wasn't important. My God. But we're survivors. Yes, Hallelujah. Sir. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> we was hungry. I was telling Brother Eric when Lady Bowman was going to work and we was at home and the boys like, we hungry, man. I'm looking, I'm like, I, I believe it was the Holy Ghost. Man, get some water and get some flour. I'm like, we're going to make with this, pancakes. Man, them kids put up work on them flour cakes. <laughs> Lady Bowman came home, what y'all eat? Woo, Bo made some pancakes. Oh, you want some? She's like, mm -mm. I'll be hungry. <laughs> But we're survivors. Amen. 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 Did we have, have repossessions? Three, four of them. Walking to church, getting cars, not paying for them, getting them taken. Walking to church, walking to church, still making them time. Oh, I don't have no ride. I'm going, I can't get to church. Oh, we still win. Yes. People are coming to get us. This is why it's so important to come get y'all. We know yes. what it feels like not to have a car. Yes, sir. We're survivors. Yes, sir. Man, y'all always going to eat. Pastor, you always looking sharp. Huh? Oh, y'all got a nice car or something? They got a nice house on? You should have been in our first apartment when we first got married. We had a closet full of water bugs. Crawl on my sneakers and stuff. But I had one outfit. The brother would give me suits. Brother's 350 pounds and give me suits. I can't wear that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Bowman, she's a um, nurse's aide and stuff. They got her dressing in little white nurse shoes with her little cap and her big white shoes. And, but we were happy. Yes, Amen. But we survived. Yes, sir. Oh, that yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you know why we survived? Because we didn't give up. Yes. We ran a race. Mm -hmm. Even in marriage. Let me tell you, this is one part of our testimony y'all didn't hear. Every time, if I do want to get upset with Lady Bowman, I think it back about this. God used her to save my life. You know why? Because it's my favorite. Yes, I was out there acting crazy. Yes, sir. And she told me, she talked to the pastor. She like, Pastor, he going crazy. Oh, I don't know what to do. He just, he just snapped. He lost it. The pastor was like, what you want him to do? I never forget what she told me. She said, I told her, if he want to leave, he can leave. I just want to make sure he stays safe. Amen. My soul was more important than her relationship. My God. Amen. Amen. We're survivors. Hallelujah. We're survivors. Yes, sir. We go to churches, help people, do everything right. I promise you to this day, I know I did everything right in every church we went to. Leave, get blackballed, never say nothing, never. Oh, I could have went back and set it off. They see me in action. I could have went back. God said, no, you mature. Yes, Amen. Your character is fortitude. Yes, sir. Yes. They're doing it right now. We can go there, but you know what's more important? My relationship. Yes, sir. This ministry. Yes, you. What y'all would do if y'all seen Pastor set it off? Oh. See, I can't ask some of y'all my father. Set it off. <laughs>
I was at work, and I know Sister Tay's uh, situation, and I was at work at the SDG, and I had to stop and pray for her. She ain't, this is the first time they hear about this. Whatever happened, I knew she was going to bring the choir rehearsal. And I said, Lord, give her peace. That she ain't got me set out. <laughs> give her peace so she can minister, deliver her. Yes. Yeah. I walked in church and I can see her confidence. You know how somebody is fighting something that they're there, but they're not there? Mm -hmm. And I started to smile because they were talking in rehearsal and they said something and she said, I'm not there. Yes, yes. I'm not here. And the praise leader said, you are here. The devil tried to play, but there's always people around. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say nothing. The whole rehearsal, at the end of the rehearsal, she said, you know something? Forgive my attitude. Mm -hmm. Dealing with some things, but pretty much I know God is real. Amen. That's a survivor. Yeah. Amen. 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 There's a little thing that matters. Some of us, we're going to do, oh, he did this, oh, he did this. I'm done, see? God don't work. You're not a survivor. No, yes. no. You can't receive your blessing. I promise you, I want y'all to see this. Let me see this chair. I want you to see this. I want you to picture this. All this right here is a box. This is your blessing. I want you to see. Every time you complain, every time you're going through, we human. Okay, that's great. We human. We, we still have life. That's good. But I want you to see every time you just say, oh, I'm done. I'm over it. God is saying, oh, look, they're praising me today. They had a good worship service. Mm -hmm. and, um, Brother Rodney, he shouted. Sister Felicia shouted. And Mother was screaming. Mother led the song today. And everybody, the new visitors, they were crying and having a good time. God said, oh, I'm going to take the locks off. Mm -hmm. The blessings. And then the word goes forth. And some of you thinking, oh, I'm going through right now. And, I'm never going to get out of it. You're like, God said, you're not no survivor. You don't believe in me. You don't trust in me. You don't want nothing up in here. You stay broke. You stay hungry. You're just, a, you're just pitiful. God wouldn't talk like that. That's why you don't get your stuff. They're appointed time. You don't, you not, everybody want to be rich. You ain't ready. That's right. Amen. You're not ready to be rich. You know what happened? You leave church. Right. You leave God. You say, I made it. God said, nope. nope. You're not ready. Do y'all see this? Yeah. I want you to yeah. picture it. This is your blessing that you're holding up. Nobody is doing it but you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want a new car. It's right there waiting for you. But at the appointed time, in due time, at the appointed time, when you stop running, when you stop becoming weary, when you stop giving up. My kid, oh, oh, I got a cold. I can't come to church. A cold? Folks is coming to church having seizures. And you can't come because your nose is running? Folks is coming to church with full-blown migraine. You can't come because you got a cold? But God is my healer. No, he not. I'm not being mean. Apply the word to your life. Amen. Apply it. Amen. Become a survivor. Who wants their blessings? Amen. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. I know the Bible says at the appointed time. This is me. You might not believe it. Even us. I believe some of our stuff, just like I said, was really held up. Mm -hmm. And we got to backtrack and do it again. Mm -hmm. You know how you, when you don't pass a test, you stay in the grade. Right. 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 Uh, you got, you're going to stay in temporary one more time. <laughs> God is saying, oh, no, you're going to stay right here. You're going to stay at Usher again. 